Alright, hey guys, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Well, sort of. <laughs> so today I'm going to be starting off this three-part tutorial. Uh, it's in three parts, not so much of the length, but just because I find it easier to split up that way, and I think it'll make a little bit more sense so people can skip around if they already know parts. So what we're going to go over today is um, talking about um, basically using our workflow of going through GIMP, Inkscape, and Blender. If you don't know what Ink Inkscape or um, GIMP is, I'm going to explain those two. So Inkscape, which is what I have open right now, is a sort of, uh, if you know what Adobe Illustrator does, it's basically that. It makes vector images um, and works with SVG files and color fills and just vectors all around. But if you don't know what that is, we'll get to that in a minute. Also, we have GIMP, which I'll open up right now and see um, right here. GIMP is basically uh, open source Photoshop. And Inkscape is also um, open source, and it's uh, free to download. And I'll put links in the description to download both of these programs. But what we're going to look at first of this tutorial is we're going to look at what is a vector image. And vector images are really something neat, mainly because they are sort of ultra high definition. But they're also really cool in what we can do with them in Blender. But we'll get to that eventually. So what we're going to look at here is first, what actually is a, a vector image? So if you can see here, I have two people. Although I'll tell you, this one right here is not a vector image, and this one is. This is what's known as a bitmap image. You've got all sorts of bitmap images, and they're the most common form on the internet of image types. You can see bitmaps, uh, JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs. Uh, but these images are really common on the internet. Uh, PNGs, GIFs, JPEGs, um, and TIFFs, and everything along that line. Um, vector images, however, are on the opposite end of the spectrum of images, as they're not actually images at all. They're actually more like drawings, almost. It's hard to explain, but I think once we get into this, you'll see. So we're going to look at the really one big difference, and this is the really cool thing about vector images, uh, right here, right now. So I'm about to zoom in on these, and you're going to pretty much instantly notice the difference. So zoom in once, twice, three, four, and we notice our person is starting to become more jagged, but our vector image is still round and smooth as can be. Let's zoom in some more. Yeah, you can see that our vector image is not getting pixelated, and in fact, we can zoom in even more, and you'll see here that this line is still not pixelated, and you're probably saying, wow, he's got a really high-definition JPEG there. No, this is actually is a true vector image, and what is... Uh, vector image I'm going to show you right now. If you click on it, you can notice there are these paths here. So if we zoom in a little bit, we can see I can drag and pull this around, um, do that. So yeah, you can just see that they're basically just paths with, that are filled up, and you know I could just leave it like that. It doesn't look very much like a person anymore. It looks a bit like an amputee with a knife attached to his arm, but uh, that's a bit morbid. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, so, so uh, basically in this tutorial, what we're going to go through is we're going to go through how to find a bitmap image um, online, which most of you can probably do, and then take it um, and make it, edit it a little bit up in GIMP, um, so we have it ready to rasterize or vectorize in Inkscape, which we will then um, vectorize, and then finally we will import this SVG, or scalable vector graphic, into Blender, where we can use it to animate and all sorts of stuff. All right, so just close this out, um, close it up, saving, all right. So I'll just open that back up again so we have it available for later. I have Inkscape Portable because of uh, what computer I'm on, but let's not worry about that right now. So I already actually have an image. Um, it's in my downloads, and uh, I'm going to uh, edit it with GIMP. Um, I will also put this uh, up for download in the description, or I'll put a link to it in the description so that you all can follow along if you want to with this exact image. All right, so you can see here we have the image. Um, it's not quite where I want it to be. If you saw how I did it in Inkscape, it was black, and it was just this guy and not this girl, because I only want the guy, I don't want the girl, um, or I only want the girl and not the guy. Um, we'll actually do the girl just for uh, example purposes, I guess, this time. So first, once you have GIMP open and you have this image, you're going to take it, and uh, you're just going to select this, uh, this girl here, and then we're going to go up to Image, and Crop to Selection. And uh, sorry if I go a little fast. I've been in GIMP for a while, and it's just some things are second nature to me. If I go, uh, miss over anything, feel free to leave a comment. I'm sure I'll be able to get back to you and explain it. But OK, so now we have our girl. And um, I'm just going to move it over a little bit so we can see it better. So we have our girl. Um, she, once again, she's still not black yet, um, her figure at least. It just makes it easier for us to convert to a vector image. And this blue I want to get rid of. But before we can do all this, it, it's a PNG, as I downloaded it from the internet. And I don't want PNG for using threshold values, which I'm going to show you in a minute. 
you need uh, JPEGs. I mean, you can use PNGs, but it's a bit easier to use JPEGs. So I'm going to right click on the image over here, layer, and I'm going to click flatten image. All right, so now I have the image flat, and you'll notice that the uh, transparency went to black over here because that's my background color. So I'm going to quickly go in here. Uh, I'm going to grab the color dropper tool, uh, get that certain blue, and then I'm going to go over to fill tool and just fill in those edges um, just so that they're, uh, you know, they're blue and everything. And uh, I'm also going to get the pencil and just draw over the little bits that I missed um, just to make sure that I got everything because um, I want my image to be as clean as possible when I convert it to a vector, or else it could confuse Inkscape. All right, so now I have this blue, and I'm still not quite there, but I'm almost done with my GIMP section. So here we're going to go up to here in Colors. We're going to go down to the Threshold, and then we're going to see here, and instantly our image turned white. And that's not quite what we want. But if you notice, if I start to pull it over here, you'll hopefully maybe see. Oh, nope. Something seems to be wrong with my image, and I think I know what it is. So. The problem with our image right now is that these are both fairly blendable colors. You wouldn't think so, but in actuality they are. But that's OK. What we can do is we can go up to Colors, Desaturate, and then there's going to be three options. And we're not, see, as lightness, you can see that these are fairly close in color on the black to white scale. Luminosity, however, is what we want. So you're going to go ahead and click on Luminosity, and you're going to see here we have this image. And in fact, now we don't even have to use Threshold, but I can show you what Threshold does anyways. It basically is going to make it a little bit more rough. But uh, we'll just leave it smooth as it is, it, because if you can get a smooth image, it makes it that much easier for Inkscape to convert to a vector. So now I'm going to go uh, over here, and I'm just going to make sure that actually, I um, think this should be, oh yeah, I'm going to go ahead and invert the colors here. And then I'm going to go and get my white back and uh, dip it in here. And so that ends our first part of the tutorial. I'll see you in the second and third parts.